I'm making this short film for all the children who came out to Australia and had to leave behind their friends, family, pets, you know, extended family, grandmothers, grandfathers. Um, but also for that little girl, me, Sitsa, that's what they used to call me. Um, it's just um, a nickname. Um, yeah, for her because I think finally, you know, now that, to honor her really, because now she's turned into a fairly strong woman who knows basically roughly who she is and where she wants to go. And so it's just, yeah. And, and like I said, honoring the other children that had to go through a similar experience. Um, going to the unknown. When my family moved um, to, to Adelaide in 1964, um, I had mostly Australian friends, but I spent time with my cousins. And I guess I, I was trying really hard to be Australian um, and shake off the Greekness. Um, so it was like a compliment if someone said to me, you don't look Greek. <laughs> and it was like, oh, don't I? You know, I guess I thought I did look Greek. But um, as the years went on, I think that going to Greece as a 19 year old and looking at all the historical and um, the museums and the history, the rich history, it didn't mean anything to me really but I did feel a bond for the land and that surprised me and I thought, oh, I'm feeling this real pull to the land here. So maybe, maybe I'm not as Australian as I think. Um, and then cutting back to um, maybe just in the, I was in my late fifties um, when I went to Greece and visited the village that I was born in. Unfortunately, there's not many people living in the village but just spending time in Thessaloniki and going to the museums made me realize that, I, it, that even though it had taken me a long time, I was um, starting to feel quite proud of my heritage. And, but with my identity, I still think there's a lot of, I feel very close to the Australian um, landscape too. And that often has inspired me with some of my paintings especially when I got to see the colours in the Northern Territory. So, yeah, it's that, um, yeah, a bit of me is Greek and, you know, it's that blend, I, I don't know. I said, uh, I've said to people, it's like sitting on the fence, somebody who came from an Italian background had written in her book that she felt like she was a fence sitter. And I feel like, but as a positive, in a positive way that, if you want to use your Greekness, you can delve into that side. And if you want to be Australian, you can delve into that side and your experience as being Australian. So it will never be clear cut. So I see myself as both. My um, improvisation practice um, of movement, dance, especially dancing in the environment, has really um, been an important part of my development, of my identity. Um, but I feel like as I was growing up, the real me had been crushed, squashed by um, a very strict father, which is not uncommon in the, that generation that migrated from Greece and Italy. Um, which meant that I wasn't able to t uh, 
start any creative pursuits like music, drama, um, those sort of things. So it wasn't until I started doing the visual art practice in 95 when I was in my 30s and then a bit after that in my 40s when I started doing movement improvisation, which I loved to bits. It was just, for me, it was a really healing thing too. Both were. Um, the mindfulness of the art practice um, where I could just switch off um, and be in the moment. In fact, I think the only time I have ever been able to meditate is during improvised movement. Because people say to me, like, they talk about how difficult it is to meditate. And so moving meditation for me is, well, it's, it's, it's uh, doable for me and it works for me. And the other type is when I'm doing my art practice and I'm in the zone. And both those things have helped bring out the real me, which I feel is a more extroverted, outgoing, confident stronger woman that I was growing up because I was had low confidence and um, I found it really hard to make decisions and that was partly because I was so controlled by my father and it all started with the death of my father actually that was when I started to um, want to be free yep I was unsettled and I wanted change in my life and it came, not in the way that I expected, but yeah. I'm glad I discovered art or art discovered me. Teaching my children or encouraging my children to um, speak the language because I was kind of forced to go to afternoon Greek school, which I hated, and having rejected to a certain extent my, my Greekness, um, I thought, well, I'm not going to put that on my kids because I didn't enjoy it. Um, my two, two of my children do speak, um, understand a bit of Greek, but they didn't study it, so it's very minimal. So I think that's the only regret, really. Um, I think I was very loved and appreciated and the whole community in my village looked after me and my sister. We were well known. I had complete freedom. I used to play in the fields adjoining our village and come home to eat. And if, or if my grandmother called me home because my grandmother lived with us. So um, there was this lot of um, lying on the grass, weaving grass and I have all these memories playing with my cousins, playing with other little children in the village. And then that ended with um, being told we were going to Australia. And I don't remember the journey much on, on the ship. But coming to, to live in Adelaide was, we lived with my uncle for a little while for six months or more, and then moved to our own house. I don't know how long that took, it must have taken about a year. Um, but it was pretty traumatic, I think, because it felt like for me, I did do some paintings a while, which had a while ago, maybe 15 years ago, they had a lot of bars in them, uh, as if you were looking out into a landscape, but you were, the person was behind bars. And that's how it felt living here after having the freedom of the village life. It was like, you can't do that, you can't do that. You can't go to the school thing, you can't go to this, you can't do swimming. It was like, and I remember getting quite anxious when I had to ask permission to go to a school social event. Sometimes it was during school time. So yeah, it, 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 was, it was dramatic and traumatic. Um, and I, I really thank God that I did, I did see that show, which helped me recognize it for, for what it was and then do some work through art and through speaking to a counselor to work through that and get to the other side. Because I found with the really uncomfortable stuff, it's no use skirting around it. You've got to go through the, the mucky stuff and then you can get out to the other side.
I was trying to think whether there was any positive experiences um, that I can remember about moving from the village to Adelaide. There was a lot of loss there because um, I think that's what made me very shy as a child, that I lost a lot of things by moving. But was there any gains that I didn't see maybe at the time? And I was thinking that one of the positives was probably that I got really good teachers because they didn't have like English as a second language or any specialist teachers to help children who migrated from other countries. And it was a lot in the 50s and 60s. But um, I had really beautiful teachers at um, Westbourne Park Public School. And they must have spent some, I don't remember, but they must have given me extra attention to help me with my English because I don't think it took me too long to grab onto it and um, start to feel comfortable with the language. We still spoke Greek at home, but spoke English when we were at, at school. Um, and I think the other positive was making friends. I know, um, I think I fell in love with um, a boy called Frank in year one, which seems pretty young to do that, but there you go. And there was, um, uh, I made close friends with uh, two or three people, but especially a young girl called Helen, who was also, her parents had migrated from Cyprus to Adelaide. And we were best friends for a few years. And, and then I think we broke up. She went to hang around with another group of girls who were more popular. <laughs> and I found that quite difficult. And I think that was because I was also still very um, low in confidence, extremely low. Um, yeah. So there was a couple of positives. And also I think moving into the house in Westbourne Park, it was a lovely area and we had some a lot of older people in the street and they took us under their wing. There was a lovely woman who'd grown up in the country and lived in our street and she used to ask us to look after her garden when she went on holidays and my sister and I used to share that role and she had really beautiful things growing in her garden like berries and yeah just she was a really lovely um, person for us to get to know. So. Um, yeah, there was a, probably an, a, a, another lady, her sister, who also took us under her wing and she had a piano and sometimes she would sing to us. So my sister and I used to go and visit her as well. And we also really enjoyed Brown Hill Creek and riding our bikes um, to, through Brown Hill Creek but also playing in the creek. So we did get that freedom. I think, um, I don't know why my father let us ride off on our bikes, but <laughs> yeah, he didn't mind us doing that. Yep. An event that took place um, about nine months ago at my workplace um, just reminded me and brought up some of the trauma of leaving Greece when I was six and a half years old. And I was able to work through some of that using my art and using some trauma therapy. And it made me realize that you, I had never grieved. I had this really strong sense one day after talking about this issue with my counselor and I thought, I've never grieved for my village. There was so much that I lost by leaving that tight community but I'd never actually thought that you could grieve for a place. But I think I was grieving for all that I had left behind. It all really started with my uncle George, who I think was 18 roughly when he came to Australia and then to Adelaide and start, got work in a factory, which a lot of the migrants um, ended up working in factories in the 50s and 60s. And he, he just kept writing and sending photographs to my father. And I know my father sent photographs to him and letters. And he said, you've got to come to Australia. And I remember my dad saying that my uncle thought it was a really good place for us. And I'm not much of a history buff, but I know it probably was not that great in Greece at the time, in the early 60s. Um, and my father took that risk and 
decided to come to live in Adelaide and so we all had to pack up and put our things in trunks and get ready, get passport photos done and prepare for the trip. Unfortunately, I don't have, or fortunately, I don't have any memories of arriving on the ship in Adelaide. But I do have strong memories of living with my uncle and aunt and my cousin at Parkside and walking to school. The school wasn't very far. And I also remember the first day of school, which was pretty scary. Um, my mother, I was holding on to my mother and I remember the class teacher pulling me away from my mother and I was like crying and probably screaming. Um, and then eventually I settled down on the mat with the other children and I remember peering out as they did morning prayer and copying what they were doing because I'd never um, been, been part of praying that way with our hands together because we didn't do that in Greece. Um, so yeah, that, 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 that was a pretty strong image. Um, it was that, the unknown, uh, the totally new experience. While I'm here in Nantes, I was just um, planning what I'm going to do when I go to Greece because I'm going to stay in Thessaloniki, which is only a couple of hours from the village where I was born. And um, we, I'm thinking of getting a taxi there or a bus and just then seeing who I might recognise. But it's not who so much as going to the places that I had to leave behind in 1964. Here I am, finally the village after 35 years. <laughs> when I hadn't experienced life much and uh, I've run into someone who knows us called Kutini. <laughs> I, I knew I'd meet somebody I can cuddle in the village. <laughs> this is Kutini. <laughs> I was born here. <laughs> it feels good. So I decided to make this doll um, before I came here um, to signify, I guess, after I looked at her, I think it was a sort of a representation of the child in me plus the person I've become after so many years of living in Australia. So, and she's got a bit of creativity ab about her with the colour of her hair and the Hessian is like that village, you know, the groundedness, the wanting to be close to the earth. If I'd stayed in Greece, I don't think I would have had half the opportunities that I've had here in Australia, be it with education, employment, medical, um, health. And so I'm really grateful for what Australia has given me. I'm also grateful that I have left behind through good medical care the black dog that was hounding me for many, many years, probably since I left Greece. And this has allowed me to take risks in my life, to delve more deeply into my creative practice, and I think to encourage other people in their artistic practice as well. I want to thank my family, my extended family and friends, but especially my partner Gordon who and my children and my sister who've encouraged my creative endeavours and have 
just been there for the times that I've thought, oh no, this is too hard, I can't do it. They've uh, just encouraged me and egged me on so that I can keep on doing what I do best. As for going back to Greece five years ago, that opportunity has uh, that opportunity has allowed me the experience of connecting back with the land that nurtured me and with the people that nurtured me and has given me the opportunities to feel proud of my Greek heritage. This has been a healing thing for me and I feel now at peace with the at peace that you know I have grieved for my village and leaving it when I was a child and have taken steps to working through that and feeling good about who I am and what I'm doing right now in my life. So thank you for Greece for nurturing me in my early years.